Thank you to Sages for allowing me to present our study. My name is Roy Gann. I'm a PGY-5 chief resident from Maimonides Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. I have nothing to disclose. The transverse abdominis plane block is a peripheral nerve block that targets the spinal sensory nerves of the anterior abdominal wall, T6 to L1. The tap plane is located between the internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscles. Usually is performed by using anatomic landmarks, laparoscopic guidance, or ultrasound guidance. The ultrasound guided technique targets the lumbar triangular petit, which is bordered by the external oblique muscles anteriorly, the latissimus dorsi muscle posteriorly, and the iliac crest inferiorly. The tap block is most commonly utilized in surgeries of the lower abdomen, such as hysterectomy, prostatectomy, and inguinal hernia repair. Here are two illustrations demonstrating the relevant anatomy of the tap block. The illustration on the left shows spinal nerves T7 to L2 and their corresponding dermatomes innervating the anterior abdominal wall. The illustration on the right shows the layers of the abdominal wall with the tap plane in between the internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscles. This is a picture of the lumbar triangle petit. The triangle petit is the target site um, of injection for the ultrasound guided technique. Within our institution, our surgeons were providing pain control to our sleep gastrectomy patients, either with a laparoscopic guided tap, ultrasound guided tap, or infiltration of incisions using um, a mixture of local anesthetic. We hypothesized that the LG tap group would provide um, better pain control um, compared to the other two groups um, by measuring pain scores and morphine milligram equivalents. We also predicted that the LG tap group would um, spend less time in the operating room and have a decreased hospital length of stay compared to the two other groups. So our methods, we had 90 sleep gastrectomy patients uh, with three groups of 30 patients um, consisting of the LG tap group, ultrasound tap, and standard, standard infiltration groups. All our patients met NIH criteria to qualify for bariatric surgery. Patients with a history of opioid dependence, local anesthetic allergy, and significant liver disease were excluded from the study. The data was collected retrospectively from January 18 to January 2020. All the patients um, received standardized general anesthesia. They all underwent a similar technique of laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy using four or five millimeter ports, one 15 millimeter port for um, the stapler, and we stapled over a 42 French bougie. The LG tap group and ultrasound tap group used identical lo local anesthetic mixture of 20 mLs of liposomal bupivacaine and 40 mLs of quart percent marcaine mixed and divided into um, 30 mLs for each side of the abdominal wall. The LG tap group was performed by the same surgeon using a laparoscopic blunt tip applicator. The ultrasound tap was performed by an attending anesthesiologist with training in regional anesthesia from our anesthesia group at Maimonides. The infiltration group used a mixture of 20 mLs of liposomal bupivacaine and 20 mLs of um, quarter percent marcaine, which were then injected liberally into all the incisions by the operating surgeon. Here pictured is one of our anesthesiologists demonstrating the ultrasound guided technique with the ultrasound probe in the lumbar triangle petit and the needle perpendicular to ultrasound probe aiming for the transverse abdominis plane. Here's a short video demonstrating our laparoscopic guided technique. We used a laparoscopic long blunt tip applicator to perform the laparoscopic tap block. Here you see the applicator going behind the transverse abdominis muscle and then our surgeon uh, bluntly dissecting superiorly and medially towards the costal margin. One of the drawbacks of the ultrasound, ultrasound guided tap is that it does not anesthetize the nerves of the upper abdomen very well. And this is one of the um, limitations of the ultrasound guided technique and its application in surgeries involving the upper abdomen. Here we see the um, local anesthetic mixture opening the tap plane and then the applicator dissecting inferiorly and laterally towards the 
lumbar triangulopathy, we saw really good outcomes and good pain control with this technique. There was a learning curve with application of the laparoscopic tap. So we had uh, one of our anesthesiologists perform an ultrasound as we were performing the laparoscopic guided technique to prove to ourselves that we were in the correct plane. And with these ultrasound images, we see here that our applicator was, was truly in the correct plane between the internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscles. You see the local anesthetic opening the um, tap plane and anesthetizing the, the nerves of uh, the tap plane. Postoperatively, um, all patients had a standardized order set consisting of a bariatric stage one clear diet they were all on standing IV acetaminophen given every six hours, standing IV Zofran, and they were given PRN oxycodone and IV morphine. The pain scores were assessed by a nurse using the visual analog scale for pain uh, measured at six, 12, 18, and 24 hours after surgery. The mean pain score over 24 hours was then recorded. The PRN doses of opioids were calculated and reporting reported using uh, morphine milligram equivalents. The mean hospital stay was calculated in days, and the total time in the operating room between the LG tap and ultrasound tap groups uh, was calculated in minutes. Our statistical an um, analysis um, used descriptive analyses to present the demographic and clinical characteristics of the three groups. Pain scores were compared between the LG tap, ultrasound tap, and standard infiltration groups using the Criscoll Wallace test. Prescribed MMEs and mean hospital stay were compared between the three groups using analysis of variants. The total time in the OR between the LG TAP group and ultrasound TAP group were compared using T-test. Our pain scores, the LG TAP group had a mean pain score of, of 1.36 after 24 hours. The ultrasound TAP group, 3.71, and standard infiltration group, 5.13. This reached um, statistical significance with a p-value less than 0 0.05. The morphine milligram equivalents, the LG TAP group had 5.4 MMEs, the ultrasound group 18, and the standard infiltration group 43.5 MMEs. This again reached statistical significance with a p-value less than 0 0.05. As an example, um, four milligrams of IV morphine equated to um, 12 MMEs and five milligrams of oxycodone equated to 7.5 MMEs. Hospital length of stay was roughly the same for all three groups at um, two days. This did not reach statistical significance and had a p-value greater than 0 0.05. The total time in the OR between the LG TAP and ultrasound TAP groups again showed um, the LG TAP group was, uh, was favorable being in the operating room um, approximately 20 minutes less than the ultrasound tap group. Uh, again, this reached uh, statistical significant significance with P value less than 0 0.05. In conclusion, the laparoscopic guided tap lock um, using a long blunt tip applicator was superior in providing pain control compared to the ultrasound guided tap and standard infiltration of incisions in patients undergoing sleep gastrectomy. There was statistical significance in pain scores and opioid consumption in favor of the laparoscopic guided tap group. And there was also a statistically significant difference in the total time in the OR in favor of the LG tap group. This decreased time in the OR and the elimination of the requirement of an ultrasound and anesthesiologist to administer the tap block led to a significant cost benefit for our patients in the hospital. By using a long blunt tip applicator to perform the tap block, the tap plane can be infiltrated more widely, especially in the upper abdomen, which was a primary drawback of the ultrasound guided technique. By utilizing this, um, this technique of using a long blunt tip applicator for the tap block, the tap block could be uh, more widely applied to other surgeries involving the upper abdomen with uh, increased efficacy. I'd like to thank my mentors, Danny Showinter and um, Sergei Tarushkin, and our MIS fellow, Dr. Bortz, and my co-resident, Dr. Bakshi.